Well, thank you uh, very much, Mr. Chairman. Uh, Mr. Chairman, I, I think most of us, uh, at least on this side, realize that um, there is more anger and resentment and disgust with the Federal Government probably today than any time in our history, because almost every day people are reading stories or hearing stories about tremendous, ridiculous waste, uh, inefficiency, uh, overregulation by the Federal Government. Uh, and also, I think they resent the fact uh, that uh, almost nobody or very few in the bureaucracy have ever spent any time running a small or medium-sized business, and they have no idea or understanding of the pressures, uh, uh, how hurtful it can be to have to lay off people during slow times and things of that nature. But the disgust, I think, probably uh, uh, hit its height when the, they heard and read about an, a high-up EPA official receiving $900,000 over a several year period for doing no work and even taking paid vacations on the taxpayer dollar. And I want to get back into that just a moment. Uh, the, uh, it, we were given background material that says uh, before the President nominated McCarthy to head the EPA, she served as Assistant Administrator of the Office of Air and Radiation from 2009 to 2013. While McCarthy was aware of Beale's frequent absences and lack of work product, she never adjusted Beale's pay or discontinued the unauthorized retention incentive bonuses which made Beale the highest paid employee in OAR during her tenure. And then it goes on, in fact, EPA officials wrote an entire report entitled John Beale Pay Issues in July 2010, which McCarthy was aware of by at least January 2011, despite recommendations of recommendations to cancel Beale's bonuses, McCarthy halted the internal review and permitted the unauthorized bonuses to continue. Both McCarthy and Bob Paraseppi, and I am sure I am mispronouncing that name, attended Brenner and Beale's joint retirement cruise in 2011. And now I am told that, um, uh, and, and we hear um, uh, Ms. McCarthy say that, uh, that uh, Mr. Beale received uh, no bonuses, uh, but we have an email here that I think they have put up on the board there, in which um, this was uh, Ms. McCarthy's response to a quote has Craig, uh, Craig uh, that is Craig Hooks gotten back to you about the pay issue yet. I am eager to move ahead with canceling the bonus. McCarthy replied, no, he hasn't. It is now in his hands as far as I am concerned, showing really a, a hands-off attitude about did no work and who defrauded the taxpayers out of $900,000. And the title of this hearing is Management Failures Oversight of the EPA. And that, uh, I think, shows why this hearing was necessary. But I will tell you, Ms. McCarthy, I am as concerned as I am about that. I am more concerned about something else. Uh, President Obama said a few years ago, he said, under my plan of a cap-and-trade system, electricity rates would necessarily skyrocket, regardless of what I say about whether coal is good or bad, because I am capping greenhouse gases. The, the problem with that is, and we don't, we, we don't have enough people at the EPA, because they have got these high-paying jobs, they don't understand that a lot of people in my district and around the country have, their, have trouble paying their utility bills. And if we triple or quadruple these utility bills, it is going to hurt a lot of poor and lower income and working people. And I don't think the people at the EPA keep that in mind. And I don't think they realize, too, that if you come out with more and more regulations, it helps the big giants. It helps the big, big companies. But it hurts the little guys. We have overregulation by the Federal Government, not only by the EPA, but, uh, but a lot of it by the EPA. A lot of it has run small and medium-sized businesses out of business or forced them to merge or forced them to go to other countries. We have sent millions of good jobs to other countries for the last 40 or 50 years, and we have ended up now with the highest paid waiters and waitresses in the world. 
And a lot of it, in fact, I think the majority of it is because of environmental overregulation and red tape. Uh, I've, that's, all, that's all I have to say, Mr. Uh, Chairman. Might I clarify something, Mr. Chairman? Yes, ma'am. I just wanted to clarify that the bonus issue I, I was answering, I, I didn't realize that they were talking about a retention bonus, and that bonus I did not give. Um, it was actually awarded earlier. It, it continued to be on the payroll. I sought th that to be off the payroll on numerous occasions. Um, and that is one of the issues we are trying to uh, get uh, compensation back. Well, you, you were the head of this OAR in 2009, right? I did. In and 2010. I my, my understanding. In 2011. That, yeah, my understanding and at that Mr. point. Mr. Beale was employed by that agency, yeah, the highest paid right, employee right, of that agency right. during 2009, 2010, yeah. and 2011. It, it was just my recollection that, that when I brought this to his attention, he advised me not to take action because he needed to communicate it to the Office of Inspector General and that I should not alert uh, Mr. Beale to any potential investigation. That is what that, that email reflected. If the Chairman will allow me just one uh, yes. uh, other thing, though, I will tell you this. Johnny Pesky was a real close friend of mine, and he has had me in the dugout at Fenway Park. Really? And I was glad a, a few times, and I'm sure if you're a Red Sox fan, you, you've heard of Johnny Pesky. I sure have. <laughs> he was I a sure great have. man. He, he, you and I can at least, spoken, he, at least agree on that. He's breath as Ted Williams, <laughs> and it's, a, it's great. Thank the, you. Uh, the gentleman from Tennessee's time has expired. Uh, 